All right, guys, how's it going? Rooster here in Tennessee, customer test video, Longhorn Superior N6. This customer's already had a, a tracking number attached to their order, but we do need to do a video before it ships out. Again, these are very expensive radios, so I always like to kind of show the output of them, what people can expect them to do when they get them, and uh, kind of show you how it performs and everything before it goes out, give the customer peace of mind that they are getting a, a good working radio uh, since they pay a considerable amount of money for it. Uh, now they are AM and sideband, so you want to see the output power on AM and sideband. We'll get into that. We'll talk about average power, peak power a little bit, and how to balance that out on these radios, kind of the, uh, the parameters that I recommend myself. Other people may have different suggestions. Um, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of adjustments inside these radios. You kind of have to balance it out between all of them. Uh, you can end up with a radio that shows a lot of peak power, like these things will do 700-800 watts peak. And then if you have an average power meter, they might not be showing anything. Uh, and then you have to find the balance to, to kind of get your average power up there and your peak. So if, to a lot of people, if they don't have a meter that reads average power, they may have one of these that's doing a whole, whole lot of power, not drawing a whole lot of current. And for whatever reason, they don't feel like it's getting out as good as it should. Well, that's probably because whoever did it up didn't even look at the average power on it. And that does matter. Um, does matter as far as the performance of these radios. Uh, for example, uh, when they're completely stock, they'll show like six, seven hundred watts PEP on sideband, but they'll only show, you know, like a hundred watts of average power or 125 watts of average power. And uh, that's going to make a big difference as far as the loudness of the radio and the, uh, the effective power that's coming out of it. So that being said, I just want to show you guys how this one is set up and this will be the custom video for the customer. I'll send him a link to it. That way he kind of knows how to run the radio, my recommendations, and uh, to set them up for success. So first things first, we're going to start out on AM. We've got the RF power all the way down, and I'm going to show you guys peak and average output. You can see it cuts down to below 20 watts dead key. That way if he wants to drive it into an amp, he can, a large amp. Hello. And we're swinging over 200 average close to 300 average. The PEP, check, audio, check, audio, check, audio, one, two, audio, 800 watts PEP. Now, the way this thing is set up, on AM, you will never have to run this RF power much above right there. If you start turning up here, you're gonna be getting kinda in the danger zone of running too high of a dead key, okay? To get the most power out of it, that's just the way it ends up being. Um, you have to mind yourself when you're on AM, because if you run it right here, for example, a little bit over a 200 watt dead key. So I do not recommend that at all. Where I would run it personally, even if, if you're running it by itself, come down there about 100 watts. You may come up to 125, go down to 80. But for a reference, that's going to be right in the 9 o'clock, between 8 and 9 o'clock range on the RF power. Hello. And there we are. We're swinging about 300 average, which is about what I would expect out of these. Again, now AM, do not run the RF power much above that. Uh, you're asking for issues. <laughs> uh, PEP with it wide open is not going to change. Hello, or with it at 9 o'clock is not going to change still around 800 watts PP. To show you the current draw on AM, we're at 14.9. Hello, over 50 amps, 50, 53 amps. Now again, if you don't tune this thing out and adjust it to where it shows good average power, you'll be showing 800 watts over there and then you'll be like drawing 30 amps or something over here. And it's like, what the heck, that doesn't add up. Uh, it's only drawing 30 amps, but it's doing 800 watts, doesn't make sense. Drawing 50 plus amps, 300 watts average power, uh, 800 watts PEP at 14.9 volts, that makes a whole lot more sense. So now what I want to do is go to sideband. Now, if it was mine, I would probably just always leave the RF power alone, run it right there, that way you don't have to worry about turning it back when you go to AM, turning it up when you go to sideband. Just run it right there and be happy with what it does on sideband but we will show what it does, turn down right there and all the way up on sideband. So audio, see the average power is pretty far down. 
but the PEP is going to be way up there. Audio, check one, two, three. Audio, check one, two, three. Audio, almost 700. Hello. And there you go, like I said, around 30 amps. So to get that to come up, we're just going to turn this up. We'll go wide open on sideband. Uh, you don't want to run it wide open on AM ever, but we can run it wide open on sideband. Audio, one, two, three, audio, one, two, three, audio. So it's still showing 700 watts PEP, but guess what? Audio, one, two, three, audio, audio. Over 300 average. Now check out the difference in the amount of current that it draws. Hello, audio, audio. Over 50 amps, just like on AM. So we've got some good balance there. The amount of power that's drawing on AM and sideband, about the same. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with running it down here. But I wanted to show that because you guys notice even 30 amps and 50 plus amps, it was drawing the same amount of current. It was drawing, it was, excuse me, it was drawing significantly different amounts of current, but showing more on the watt meter. That's why I highly recommend, even if you don't get a radio from me, get people to show you the average power and the peak power. If you've got a radio that's doing 100 watts average and it's doing 800 watts PEP, there's something not quite right with it. Uh, you're not going to be getting the best performance out of the radio. You want to see a good amount of power in both. Just like you wouldn't want a radio that does 400 watts average and doing 500 PEP. It's out of balance. So that's how the radio does. Again, to, my, to the customer, I recommend run the RF power right there when you run the radio by itself on AM. You can turn it up higher on sideband if you want to, uh, but that's all up to you. Now, what you don't want to do is, like I said, go to sideband, you've got it wide open, then you come back to AM and you're dead king, you know, 300 watts or something. So to alleviate that, probably just safer to run it right here. But again, if you want to get the most out of the radio on sideband, you can crank that power up. Uh, that's it, guys. We never even got the radio hot enough to kick the fan on, so uh, it's just barely warm. Once it reaches a certain temperature, the fan will kick on. I feel like this is a safe number for it. You get the best of performance and um, power out of it. Of course, you can sacrifice some performance and uh, you know probably increase the longevity at a minimal amount, or you can significantly hurt the longevity of the radio and uh, make the performance go up. But I feel like this is kind of a happy medium. Um, and feel like it should do a good job for the customer. I, I don't know if he's getting it for AM or sideband, but the way this radio is set up, it'll do fine on, on either. So that's it, guys. Uh, Longhorn Superior N6. Again, every one of these that sells, I will do a custom video like this and show the, uh, the power output and the parameters of the RF power. That way the customer has a general idea of how to run the radio. Um, that comes complimentary when you buy a radio uh, that costs this much money. Superior N6 Longhorn. Questions, comments, shoot me a text, 423-299-3535. Check out the website, roostercb.com. Catch you guys out there. See you, bye.